Hi everyone, TJ from Avid here, and welcome back to Pro Tools Fast Start. Now, so far we've put a drum track in our song, we've recorded bass, keys, and guitar on top of it, but today we're gonna talk about arranging our loops to make them into an actual full song. So let's pop over to Pro Tools and see what we have so far. Now that sounds pretty good to me, but a song that is the same loop over and over and over again can get a little boring. And that is where arrangement comes in. It's really important to think critically about your arrangement so that your song has dynamics. It ebbs and flows. Things come in and drop out. You have verses and choruses. That's what we're going to work on today. Now, let's start by zooming out and pressing the R key and making an intro for our song. Now for the intro, I like the sound of the kalimba and drums, nothing else. I can simply click and grab with our grabber tool and move our guitar, electric piano, and bass track out of the way. It doesn't necessarily matter where I put these yet, I'm just moving them out of the way so I can hear what an intro will sound like. I go back to the beginning of our song and hear what we've got, pressing spacebar. I like that, I think that's a nice introduction. So I'm gonna put a marker here to denote where we start. Now markers are a really, really powerful feature and they're really handy once you have a full song. To insert a marker, you simply click right here on this plus button next to where it says marker one and you type the name, I'm gonna call this intro. And wherever your cursor was selected, Pro Tools will place a marker there. Now the next part of our song that we're gonna create is called our verse. And for our verse, I just want to add guitar to the mix. I'm going to keep kalimba and drums, but I'm going to take electric piano and bass and scooch them out a little bit until we need them later. So let me move these out of the way a little more by clicking and grabbing. Let's take our guitar and line it up with our kalimba and drums. Now remember, I'm using the smart tool. So as I move my mouse around the clip, different icons pop up representing different tools that I can use. I want to find this loop icon because I've looped these clips and I can change the loop length by simply clicking and dragging. So let's loop our kalimba out for the full length of a verse. Let's loop our guitar out and let's loop our drums out. Last but not least, let's put a marker so we know where verse one starts. And let's hear what that verse sounds like. Great. Now the next part of our song is called the chorus. And typically speaking, the chorus is a culmination point. It's where all the instruments come in and your track is at its absolute biggest. Let's take our electric piano clip and put it right here so that we're lined up for the chorus. And once again, we're just gonna loop out guitar, kalimba, drums, and we're gonna add bass and electric piano to the mix. As always, we're going to add a marker so that we know where our chorus starts. Now, it can get a little bit stale if we have the same pattern repeating over and over and over again. So we're going to remedy that by adding a drum fill. If we add a drum fill right before the chorus, it adds some variation and that fill will really help to build up the energy and get us into the chorus on a high note. So let's take our cursor and go right here, right before our chorus comes in. We're going to press T to zoom in. Now, I want my drum fill to start right about here where you see my mouse, but this is where we run into a bit of an issue. When I click, grid mode makes it so that I'm selecting one part or the other. I can't actually select this middle part right here, but I can change the value of our grid by coming up here and clicking on this number and changing it to half note. So now I can click in the center of this drum part and I have a smaller grid to work with. I press B to separate where I want our fill to start. Same thing on the other side. And now we have an individual clip that I can build a drum fill in. So let's double click on this. Simply click and drag around all of our drum parts. Press delete to get rid of them. And let's add a fill. So I want to have a nice hi-hat fill going into our chorus. 
I'm going to add some hi-hat notes by simply double-clicking. And let's put an open hi-hat at the end just for good measure. Great. Now I'm going to select all. And up until this point, we've been using our smart tool, which again, depending on where you put your mouse in the clip, changes to have different functions. But I'm going to change over to our pencil tool because you can do something really amazing with velocity. I can edit multiple MIDI velocities really, really quickly to add some feel, build some anticipation going into our chorus. I can do that by clicking right down here at the bottom of our velocity and just dragging up along our notes. And you'll see that our MIDI velocity increases as we get closer to the chorus, which really kind of adds some emotion in that fill. Let's go back to our smart tool and press play to hear what that sounds like. I like that fill going into the chorus, so I'm going to close out of our MIDI editor for drums. The next part of our fill is going to be this guitar right here. Now, I only want the guitar to play this one chord before going into the chorus. And sometimes grid mode isn't the best way to go when you're talking about audio files where you have to chop them in very specific places. This is where slip mode comes in, which is this mode on the upper left hand side. If I click it, now anywhere that I put my cursor, doesn't matter if it's on the grid or not, Pro Tools will let me chop. So if I scroll in by pressing T, I find exactly where I want to cut this before our second guitar chord comes in. I press B. I'm going to do the same thing on our kalimba track. And now I'm going to go back to our grid mode and select going into our chorus and chop them one more time so I can delete these clips nice and clean. When we zoom out by pressing R, we can hear our fill in its entirety. That adds some energy going into the chorus and I really like the variation that it brings to our song. Let's zoom out a little bit more and talk about a second verse and a second chorus. Now, in most modern music, you're going to hear two verses and two choruses. But I don't want to have to recreate my verse and chorus clips from scratch, and I don't want to have to take the time to copy and paste everything individually. And that's where clip grouping comes in really handy. Let's change our grid value back to one bar so this is a little easier to work with. Let's take our cursor icon and click and drag around our entire verse and chorus. Now we simply right click and scroll down to group. Now I can edit this entire chunk of my song. I can move it back and forth all in one chunk so I don't have to get into changing every single part in and of itself. I can also double the length of our song really quickly by pressing Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows machine and it duplicates our verse and chorus. Let's add some markers here so we don't get lost later on. I'm going to call this verse 2. And I'm going to call this chorus 2. Now, the last piece is that I want to add an outro to our song that kind of takes us out gracefully. Because I've grouped this section, if I edit anything, it's going to apply to this whole group right here. But I can right click and come down to ungroup so that I can go back to looping and editing clips individually. And that's what I want to do. I want to loop just our drums out to give us an outro. Same thing with our guitar. So an outro is just going to be drums and guitar and nothing else. One more time, I'm going to add a marker. And let's hear our second chorus into our outro. I can fade out the volume of this outro, but I'm going to save that later for the mixing phase. And just like that, we've created an arrangement for a full song. As you can see, in very little time, we started with just a small loop and changed it into an entire song. The arranging features in Pro Tools are really powerful, really intuitive, and very creative to work with. Now, because our song is arranged, we are ready for the next step of the process, which I think is the most exciting. It's recording vocals. So make sure that you join us for this next video. And as always, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll catch you on the next one.